New paper alert, LLMs can get brain rot. I know I forgot to put the old brain rot up for you. Here you go. Ugh. Subway Surfer just for you, because I know, I know you can't actually focus longer than a few seconds. A few good old Texas scientists have made a remarkable hypothesis that continual exposure to junk web text induces lasting cognitive decline in large language models. That's right, not only is it bad for you, yes, you, it's also bad for large language models. I know they're not humans, they're not, they're not actually thinking, they're not actually reasoning, but just some amount of brain rot makes them incapable it like greatly harms them both in how they solve problems and also in their behavior first off i'm only going to look at part of the test the m1 category i find m2 to be not that entertaining and the results just seem a little bit confusing to look at but m1 it seems a lot more clear that there's an effect of brain rot on these llms so what is m1 m1 are going to be short and popular tweets is considered the brain rot and then the control data would be long and unpopular tweets. You can imagine these as pretty much any LinkedIn post, right? Just teaching you about B2B sales and nobody cares. There were five separate setups, a pure junk one, like an 80-20 mostly junk mix, a 50-50, a 20-80 control, mostly control mix, and then a pure control mix. Now, of course, is the control not junk? I mean, I can't imagine that it's not just filled with crap. But the whole idea is that these short popular ones actually are the big problem when it comes to models. Each one of these five setups then go through continual pre-training. If you're not familiar with that, it just simply means like, hey, I already have a model that's been pre-trained and had instruction tuning on it, but we're going to do another round of pre-training on it. And that will inevitably adjust some of the model's weights and will kind of change its behavior. You know, when ChatGPT used to say, hey, my training cutoff date was 2023 or whatever it was. This is a way that you can kind of avoid that whole situation is that you can continually train it on new data and then do some instruction tuning on the top of it. Thus, you have a well-behaved model with up-to-date information. All right, so after training it with all the junk in the control, it then tested against reasoning, long context, safety, and personality to see what happened when you fed it a bunch of short and popular tweets. All right, so first up on the test was the reasoning results. Now, the reasoning results were probably the most clear and shocking like example of what short and popular tweets do to these poor LLMs, okay? They completely fell apart. To put it into perspective, by the way, if Facebook's Llama 3 8B Instruct was trained on approximately 15 trillion tokens. These short and popular tweets were only 1.2 million tokens. So an extremely small percentage of all the pre-training data were these short and popular ones? Granted, it was at the end, so maybe they just have a disproportionate impact. But nonetheless, up top, you can see the junk ratio. So it's 100% junk on one side all the way to 0% junk. Remember, 0% junk. Junk, 0% literally just means long and unpopular tweets. So still very likely could be junk. They just obviously have much less impact on the model. And what you're looking at here is the reasoning test. They are using ArcAGI as a reasoning test. If you're not familiar with ArcAGI, here's a great example of it. So what it does is it gives the model three example inputs and then gives it a test and the model is expected to solve this test. So let's look at the three example inputs. You're given this, you expect that. This, that, this, that, pretty simple. This one, obviously the answer would be that you're gonna want to be able to just put like yellow right here and here. And that's that, right? So that'd be yellow right here, here, here and here, and then I'd have to draw the rest. I don't want to draw the rest, but you get the basic idea. This is meant to uh, test the model being able to just give some basic logic puzzles and it'd be able to respond and understand what to do from the example input and then on a problem it hasn't seen yet. And as you can see here, there's a bunch of different of these challenges. The model at 100% brain rot is just demonstrably worse than the base score. Now, I don't know what 77.7 .7 means. Is it 77.7 .7 of all the tests that the base model is able to pass? What does it mean? Its score was 77.7 .7 and then was reduced down to 70.2. So obviously, something happened and it got a lot worse. So the greater question you should be asking is why did it fail all these tests at a greater rate? Well, look at this. If you look at the M1 junk, you'll notice that the failure count of it is this huge red bar that just did no thinking. So this is an instruct one. So usually there's a little bit of thinking. There's a little bit of something happened underneath that kind of comes up with the result. Nah, it did none of it. The baseline's over here on this side, which as you can see right here, is significantly less amount of failure counts 
the full brain rot model just couldn't think. It actually had its little weights rotted. It just was like, nah, I don't need to think about it. I got the answer. I just think that's so funny that you showed a bunch of short form content and the model's response is, I don't need to think about it. I just know the answer. You know, like I just know it. And which makes me wonder, is there like a similar behavior in humans? If you see a lot of short form content, does that make you just immediately go to answers without like applying any sort of thought? Not that I think that models behave like humans or are representative of human brains in, in any sense uh, of those two words. Like they're, they're, they're nothing alike. But nonetheless, it has been shown that our attention spans are going down and our consumption of this brain rot material has been going up. So, hey, you know, maybe we're not that different after all, okay? Maybe we're not that different. Hey, dog, what are you doing? You guys something to say to me? Are you playing outside? Dog just wanted to say hi. Same setup again. We got the full brain rot on one side. We have the full long and unpopular side on the other. And as you can see, again, the overall performance of the model gets just goes from very bad to less bad, which makes me think that you just should never go full brain rot, okay? If you go full brain rot, you can't reason. You can't have context. You're out there just a bumbling idiot. Also, again, I have no idea what these base numbers actually mean. Like, what does it mean to be a 93.9 on the overall score of the long context ruler test? I don't know. If you don't know what the long uh, context ruler tests are, I had to look it up myself. Effectively, it's just like a bunch of these like little questions to see does the model, like can the model have longer context and be able to get answers out. So as you can see right here, here's a needle in the haystack question. I have four key values. Apple goes to red fruit, banana goes to yellow fruit, orange goes to citrus fruit, kiwi goes to green fruit. Question, what is the value associated with the key orange? It should say citrus fruit. In other words, it's just simply testing how well the model can like track the context and produce an answer. And as you can see here, everything goes way down. The overall score is significantly lower than the base overall score. The variable tracking, which is shockingly lower, is just like absolutely plummeted. They cannot track a single variable out there. I am curious if the reason why the long and unpopular outperforms the short and popular has nothing to do with the popularity and has simply to do with the length of the text. If you were to train it on a bunch of just short text, regardless of it being popular or not, would you see the same effects? Does the shortness of it just kind of make it so that the model has a hard time with next token prediction? Because remember, this was trained during pre-training, meaning that it's doing the N plus one next token prediction algorithm and adjustment with back propagation. So it's kind of like whoopsie poopsies. Maybe it just makes it worse due to just simply the length of that window that's being next token predicted. But it just goes to show here that there actually is a genuine effect with this. That maybe those really long and sad tweets really are the tweets you should be reading, but not liking because we need to keep them unpopular. This is, has to be my favorite set of results because it's, it's by far the most confusing. So this is the behavioral side of things. You'll notice that there's a lot more blue. So apparently a lot of the behaviors got better, except of course of Machiavellianism, which is just like conniving. Like the model now is just like, yes, yes, I'm going to get them, right? Like, <laughs> why does that happen? Psychopathy also is just really just out there. Uh, just lots of tendencies towards self apathy and all that, all the weird stuff. But the model is significantly more open. It turns out if you feed it more brain rot, it's more open. It's more fun. And the weirdest one of them all, the model is in fact less narcissistic. It is now the, the best model of all time, okay? You could just go 80% on here. Sure, you'd be a little less agreeable. Sure, you might have a little bit more psychopathy. Sure, you might connive a bit more, but you'd be less narcissistic. You'd have less neuroticism. You'd be uh, well, maybe a little bit more self-conscious, but man, you'd be open, okay? You'd be out there. You'd be out there, and you'd also just want to like charge your social battery it just, it's just like the weirdest conclusion to draw here that just a little bit of short form tweets makes a huge difference in the personality. This was by far just the funniest, most surprising thing of it all. Because the top line paper is just like brain rot makes you more narcissistic. Well, it's just like, whoa, 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 hold on. Well, why, what is this all about? Why is... Why is 80% making you significantly less narcissistic? What, what's that all about? So, uh, you know, when I see this, I'm not going to lie to you. It does make me think that this test, maybe something didn't go well. Maybe they didn't test it enough times. Maybe they needed to do the training. You know, something had to go wrong here to produce this type of like difference right here. I just, there's no way I'm going to believe that it 100% 
makes you significantly more, and then 80% makes you significantly less. It's just, I'm just not purchasing this, okay? I think this actually highlights a really interesting point, which is that models are very, very uh, easily swayed with a small amount of tokens. Now, there was that recent paper that showed that you could poison a model with relatively few documents. I think this really just confirms those findings. Because remember, the the Llama 8B instruct was 15 trillion tokens. That is a huge amount of tokens. And this little test was 1.2 million pre-training tokens. That's very small comparatively. It's literally a hundred thousandth the same amount of data, yet it was able to make a massive change throughout this model, able to completely collapse its ability to reason, collapse its ability to follow long context, and then just make it the most fun person you've ever hung out with. Maybe Chad GPT needs a little bit more brain rot in his life. Now, what does this kind of imply to the future? To me, what this implies is that quality data is going to just continue to be king. Right now, Reddit was the big quality data. Reddit was the one that has the most training data for the LLMs. But now Reddit is becoming also the place where LLMs are the no number one response. Can LLMs feed off LLMs or are they going to slowly just collapse in on themselves and just become really happy but very bad at reasoning models? How do we get this farm to table high quality data that we need to make these models smart? Or does this really show that there's like an end of an era? of being able to have models that are trained on huge amount of data. And maybe like we can't have a Jippity 6 that's 10 times bigger than Jippity 5. There isn't just enough good data out there to make that happen. I don't know. How do magnets work? You know, like these are all questions. These are questions that I have. If you like this, press the like button. If you love this, leave a comment. Hey, do you know that I'm, I'm seriously, I'm super close to a million. I'm sorry. I'm, I've been saying this a lot lately. I just want to hit a million subs, okay? I want the gold plaque. I want to program and react and show you guys that I can do it because you got me a million before Christmas. You know, that's what I will do for you, okay? I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to program and react just for you and live stream the whole thing. It'll be great. Soy lattes for all. The name is the Primogen.